friends, I'm just finishing up a couple of hours of crosswalking on uh, 53rd, just outside of my local Costco here in Davenport, Iowa. Uh, I stand on a small concrete island that separates an entrance and an exit for the Costco. This particular island is public property and uh, it's just off of the Costco property, so I, I have no problem with either the police or Costco standing where I'm standing. And I stand there with my stop and talk cross, and I've caught a, got a couple of A-frame signs that read, Free Bibles Here and Stop for Prayer. Well, today, uh, two young ladies saw the signs uh, offering prayer, and they stopped for prayer. And uh, they were two wonderful opportunities. Uh, from time to time, I'm asked uh, by people, well, Tony, how do you go about praying for strangers? How do you pray for people who stop and, and ask for prayer? You, you don't know necessarily what they believe, if they're part of another religion. Are they believers? Are they saved? Are they unsaved? So, so how do you go about praying for people who ask for prayer? Well, here are a couple examples. Um, I, I hope they uh, are an encouragement to you, and I also hope that they foster conversation. Uh, what do you think about how I prayed with these two young ladies? I'm not asking for a grade. I'm certainly not asking for a pat on the back. Uh, I'm asking to foster conversation. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you think about these two encounters outside of my local Costco this morning. Hi, how are, how are you? you? Good. Good. How many would you like? Oh, oh, oh did you? Okay. My name's Tony, by the way. And I'm Kila. I'm sorry? I'm Kila. Kila, hi Kila. Hi, how are you? Do you ladies worship here locally? We do. You do? Where, where do you go to church? Uh, Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm a member of uh, Grace Fellowship out off of uh, West Kimberly, past uh, uh, past the Walmart oh, out there. Yeah. yeah, just a little past there. Okay. So how could I be praying for you today? Um, I would like to pray for um, just guidance, uh -huh. um, just more of a discernment um, where um, we should uh, fellowship. Okay, um, okay. Just looking for something new. Um, uh -huh. Where we are, God knows um, yeah. our situation, so we just want to pray. Okay. And, and it's Keisha, right? Keila. 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 Okay. I'm going to keep my eyes open because people will honk. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to pray and, okay. and uh, if the cars start coming and you need to drive away, I'll just keep praying. Don't worry about it because God can hear. So, yes, sir. okay. Father in heaven, I thank you that Keila and her mom have stopped uh, for prayer today. Uh, Father, I thank you that by your grace, you have sent your son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ, truly God, truly man without sin. Uh, lived a life of perfection for some 33 years that the three of us can't live for 33 seconds. And yet, even though we knew no sin, at a time appointed by you, Father, before the foundation of the world, he sacrificed himself on a Roman cross, dying the death that we deserve for our sins against you. And then forever defeated sin and death three days later when he rose from the grave. Father, we are thankful that salvation is by grace through faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. And it's on the basis of that faith, Father, that uh, I ask that you give Kayla wisdom and discernment, Father, and her mother as well, and the whole family, uh, in determining where they ought to worship. Uh, Father, uh, we know there are no perfect churches, uh, certainly because people are in churches and there are no perfect people. But Father, I pray that you would give them wisdom and guidance to direct them, uh, if not where they're at now, to uh, another place where your word is rightly divided, where the gospel is rightly preached, where the only true Jesus is rightly worshipped, uh, where the church family enjoys the accountability and love and togetherness of the one another's, and that it would be a place where they can grow in their faith and their service to you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you both, ladies. Thank you so much for stopping. Thank you. Have a great day. Excuse me? Sure. Do you want to just pull off to the side so we're not blocking the driveway?
Hi, my name's Tony. Okay. And your name is? Allie. Allie. Hi, Allie. How can I be praying for you today? Just, I don't know. Whatever comes to your heart. Okay. Do you, do you have any particular spiritual beliefs? Um, I'm a Christian. Yeah? How, how did you come to faith in Christ? My grandma. Your grandma? Did, yeah. How long ago was that? Well, I mean, all my life, I guess. Yeah? I always was raised in the church. Yeah. Uh, are you worshiping anywhere locally right now? Okay. No, ever since she has passed, I really have to Oh, I'm go. sorry. How, how long has that been? Since May. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Well, I, I'm not. I'm not out here to sell a church. Yeah. And I can assure you, my church is not perfect because I'm a member. <laughs> but uh, there's information there. If you um, if you're not busy even tomorrow morning, if you'd like to come and worship with us and. Well, I just lost my job, so. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm sorry to hear that too. But um, can I can I share with you what we believe, just real quick? Would that be all right? Because I know I know trying to find a church is a scary thing, and yeah. you know it's it's so hard to, in a sense, be shopping and looking around and trying to find the right fit. And mm -hmm. and you go into a place and you don't know what they're going to say, you don't know what they're going to believe. But this is the gospel we believe. Uh, we believe that every human being is created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. So that means Tony and Allie, as different as we are, right. we have that in common. We're both created by the one and only God. Mm -hmm. And this God who created us has given us the, the knowledge, the understanding of his law on our heart. He's given us a conscience. Uh, unlike our dogs and our cats and the fish and the birds, we know the difference between right and wrong. And that's because the God who created us has written his law in our hearts. So Tony and Allie know it's wrong to lie, even though you're certainly young enough to be my daughter. And as different as we are, we both know it's wrong to lie because the God who created us isn't a liar. And for the same reason we know it's wrong to steal or to take God's name in vain or to invo be involved in sexual immorality or whatever the sin might be, that's what law breaking is. And because God is good, because He's holy, one day every human being is going to stand before God to give an account for their lives. And He's not going to judge them based on how they compare themselves to other people. He's not going to judge based on how we appear to ourselves in the mirror. He's going to judge according to that law that He's written on our heart. And the Bible says all of us have sinned, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And because God is good, because He's holy and righteous and just, He must punish that sin. He must punish that law-breaking. And the punishment He's determined for sin is eternity in hell. But the good news is, is that this same God who is angry with the wicked every day, who will judge the world in righteousness, is the same God who is loving and merciful and gracious and kind. And He showed that great love alley some 2,000 years ago when God the Father sent His Son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ, truly God, truly man, and without sin. He lived a perfect life from cradle to grave for some 33 years here on earth that Tony and Allie can't live for 33 seconds. But even though He knew no sin, even though He was perfect in every way, he voluntarily went to die on a cross. He suffered and died a horrific bloody death he did not deserve to take upon himself the punishment we rightly deserve for all of our sins against God. And then three days later, he forever defeated sin and death when he rose from the grave. What God commands of all people everywhere, including us, is that we turn from our sin and put our trust and our faith in the one who died for sinners, and that's Jesus. And if God literally causes us to be born again, He will give us a new heart with new desires. We'll begin to love the things that God loves. We'll begin to hate the things that God hates, namely our own sin. And we'll have the assurance of forgiveness, not because we go to church on Sunday, not because we do good deeds, not because of how we were raised, but because we put our faith and our trust in the only one who died for sinners. He'll forgive our sin, he'll, all of it. He'll remove it as far as the east is from the west. We'll be reconciled to the God we've spent our life offending by our sin. And we'll have the assurance of eternal life, not because we're good, but because of the goodness of God that would allow his son to die for sinners like us. 
And if God does that miraculous work in us, and He literally saves us from His own wrath, no matter what this world throws at us, loss of loved ones, loss of a job, the hardship of, of raising a beautiful child, no matter what the world may throw at us, we'll be able to endure that because this is no longer our home. This is where we are today, but we have a future hope of eternity in heaven with Christ. And so, while God loves to bless His people, He doesn't promise us things like a good job. He doesn't promise us that our bills are going to get paid. He doesn't promise us that this little one is going to grow up perfectly. His promises are better than all of that. He can, everything I just mentioned, He can do all of that. And He loves to bless His people. But the hope we have in Christ is a better hope. It's a future hope. It's an eternal hope. So that when life happens, and when things are not going the way we would like, when it seems like life is out of control, if we're in Christ, we can still experience peace in the midst of that. We can experience joy and love in the midst of that because our hope isn't in our circumstances, our hope is in Christ. And that's the good news of the gospel that we believe at our church. And, and uh, do, you know, uh, do you know where the Walmart is off of West Kimberly? Yes. So just past that on Kimberly, on the left-hand side, we kind of sit in a sit in a big open field just past Hickory Grove. Uh, it's it's probably is less than like a half. Or... Just past Harlan's. Past yeah, Harlan's. same side of the road, just okay. past Harlan's. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. What's that uh, Grace Fellowship Church. Grace, Grace Fellowship Church. Church. So um, again, there's no pressure. Okay. No salesman's going to come to your door. <laughs> but. But Allie, we would, we would love for you to fellowship with us. We would love to minister to you and to your family. We would love to show you the love of Christ. So that's entirely up to you. Can I pray for you? Father in heaven, I thank you so much that in your providence, Allie has stopped for prayer. I thank you, Father, that uh, you've given me the opportunity to, to share with her the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, I can, while I don't know her mind and I don't know her heart, I, I could see that life is weighing heavy on her right now, that she has burdens on her heart. Uh, Father, I pray that she would find her peace and her joy and her security and her love in Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that the peace that surpasses all understanding would guard her heart and her mind in Christ Jesus. I pray, Father, that, that Allie would be able to, 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 to say with her mouth, believe in her own heart what the Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans when he said, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing, shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I pray, Father, that by your grace and your mercy and your love that you would draw Allie close to you, that if, Father, if she is not yet born again, and, Father, you know, but if she is not, that she would turn from her sin and put her trust in Jesus Christ alone for her salvation. And if you have already done that work in her father, I pray that you would draw her ever closer to you, that you, Father, would, would put your arms of, of love and care and security and hope and peace and joy around her and that you would hold her close, Father. Uh, Lord, if she is in Christ, your word tells us that, that we ought not forsake the gathering together one with another. And Father, as you know perfectly and as I've heard Father that she has been without fellowship since the passing of her grandmother 
So, Father, whether it's Grace Fellowship Church or some other church, Father, I pray that you would help her to find a, a, a church home, a spiritual home where, where your word is rightly taught, where the gospel is rightly uh, preached, where, where Jesus is rightly worshipped, uh, where your, your people worship in spirit and in truth. Please, Father, I ask for your blessing on Allie's life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, are you okay? You sure? Okay. So, um, I think I have... Do I have... Oh, darn. I thought I had one of my cards here on... Well, there, there are numbers there. Okay. So, again, the door's open, whether it's tomorrow or any other time. And if we can be of any other encouragement or help to you, you can get a hold of us uh, through the numbers there, okay? God bless you, Allie. Are you sure you're okay to drive? Because I don't want you to... I'm okay. Okay, and, and how old's your baby? She's four months. Well, she'll be four months on the 21st. Four months? Yeah. What's her name? Lanaya. Lanaya. I have three daughters. The youngest is 26, and I'm expecting two grandbabies soon. Yay. Uh, so I'm very excited. Well... I'll continue to pray for you, and again, um, if you can, we would love to see you both tomorrow. Okay. All right. God bless you, Allie. Thank you so much for stopping.